What's up motocross action? I'm Josh Mosman and today we're at Parrish Raceway getting ready to ride the all new 2021 Kawasaki KX250. For the new year, this bike has a lot of the upgrades that we've seen on the KX450, including electronic starting, the hydraulic clutch, the KX450 frame and swing arm, upgraded bodywork, and more. From 2012 to 2016, the KX250 had the best power plant in the class, and it won every MXA250 shootout from 2010 all the way to 2014. Then it got beat by the YZ250F in 2015, but still the KX250 was more nimble and had a stronger mid-range power, while the YZ250F had charming handling and a low to mid power band that was unmatched. In 2016, Kawasaki changed their engine approach to a low to mid style of power, but they missed the mark. The mapping was horrible and the power band was subpar. The handling improved, but it wasn't enough to brag about. From 2016 to 2019, the KX250 was nothing more than mediocre. In a world of electric starters and hydraulic clutches, again, Kawasaki had nothing to brag about. It seemed that Kawasaki was sick of the criticism and instead of waiting out the usual four year production cycle, they worked over the engine in 2020, going in a completely different direction. The Kawasaki engineers threw a Hail Mary, as like Honda did with their 250F, going for an all top end power plant. Although there was a big difference between the CRF 250 team and the KX250 team, and that was that Kawasaki caught the ball in the end zone while the Honda team's pass was intercepted. The 2020 KX250 didn't have all the bells and whistles such as Wi-Fi mapping, an electric start, or hydraulic clutch, but what it did have was a racer's engine. The 2020 KX250 made the most peak horsepower out of the bunch, and it got on the bike with authority and pulled until 14,000 RPM. What this bike was missing in 2020, it received in 2021. It has a new, more powerful engine, a new electric start, a new hydraulic clutch, and a new Belleville washer spring that the KTMs have had for years now. MXA even got a sneak peek of the 2021 KX250 while it was on the dyno at Pro Circuit, and the dyno numbers were impressive and even better than they were last year. Now, we're excited to see how the more powerful engine, updated frame, hydraulic clutch, electric start, all work on the track. All right, guys, we just got done riding the 2021 Kawasaki KX250 at Paris Raceway. We're shutting this place down. It was a long day. We put a lot of hours in on this bike. Today, I had Daryl Eklund and myself, Josh Mosman, both riding the bike and putting a lot of hours on it. So we started off the hour meter said 1.2 hours. Now we got a total four hours of, of riding in. So we I think we wore out the Kawasaki guys, but they had a good time and we really appreciate that they stuck it out for us and uh, really helped us get this bike dialed in. So Kawasaki provided the perfect track for us to feel comfortable on the new KX250. Parish Raceway was smooth, but did get some cool ruts, some tight corners to really feel out the bottom end, which was nice. And the jumps were awesome as well. Super fun to throw some whips and scrubs off of. So for us, breaking down the deep details of this bike, it's kind of hard to shake down how it handles on a smooth track, but we did really like it. With the updated KX450 frame and swing arm, this bike feels a lot like the Kawasaki KX450, and that bike has gotten a lot of positive reviews from the MXA wrecking crew, just for its nimble handling and just overall easy to ride style of power and handling. The KX250, I felt right at home. I spent a lot of time on this bike last year, the 2020 model. I thought that I would feel different on this bike, and I thought that it would be you know, a complete big change, but it really felt right at home to me. So although the new 2021 KX250 is all new from the ground up, it really still has that same Kawasaki feel that's nimble, easy to ride, easy to throw into corners, and nimble in the air as well. So as far as the power goes, they update a lot inside of the engine. They made the connecting rod longer, which reduces friction and also ups the compression and uh, was added to increase horsepower. They also made the top of the piston head more flat to do the same thing, they make it stronger and make it stronger more on the top end. So this bike uh, was already known for being a top end power band and not having enough on bottom for the new year. They worked to increase the bottom.
bottom and the top. Continuing with the updates in the engine, the entire bottom end and the cases are all new to accommodate the updates that this bike got and also to accommodate the hydraulic clutch actuation and the electric starter as well. The top end reuses a lot of the parts that they had in the engine last year but with the same 450 frame, the engine looks a lot smaller in this bike than it did last year. The crankshaft is also redesigned to be lighter and it has a new shape which helps increase RPM. They handed us two crankshafts back to back. We really got to see the different designs. Last year's 2020 model had a very round design or kind of more hollow feeling to it uh, when you feel the inside of it where the new one has more of a dense feeling to it, but it's more of a half circle or a little more than a half circle. So uh, completely different design there. And they said that was to also increase horsepower and also work to increase durability with the higher RPMs that this bike is producing. So the KX250 produced 14,000 RPM last year. I think it was 14,250 uh, RPM. Now they went up another 250 RPMs. So it goes up to 14,500 RPM. So this bike really revs out high and you can feel it on the track. This thing loves to be revved to the moon and sometimes it's kind of scary to ride it that high in the RPMs, but on this bike with how nimble it handles and just with how much power it makes on top, it's easy to ride it up there. And it's also loud. The exhaust is, is exactly the same as it was in 2020. And it was loud last year, but it feels like it's even louder this year. So I know they also adjusted the intake. They made the intake a little bit longer and they said they did that to increase bottom end power. And they also have a new uh, coating on the inside. So it's, it's not actually a coating, but the, the finish that's on the in, inside of the intake, it's a little bit smoother as well. So that helps increase power. The cam chain also gained wider teeth on the timing chain just to uh, work with the high RPM engine and increase durability. And they also made the valve spring stiffer as well for the same reasons. Additionally, inside the engine, the clutch has hydraulic actuation, as we've mentioned, and that's been a big popular update for the new 2021 model. And we really like that. It, just like the KX450, so far, first impressions after day one, like I said, put almost three hours on the bike. Still feels strong. We didn't get any clutch fade or anything yet. And we are using the clutch more on the 250 than we are on the 450. So I'm excited to see how that works out durability wise. The 2019 KX 450 came with the jetter spring and the MXA Redken crew likes to say we shudder at the jetter. We did not like that. We weren't a fan of it and we had a lot of issues with it. So we were really happy when Kawasaki added the Belleville washer spring on the clutch. It's, it's the exact same design that KTM and Husqvarna has been using for years now. The cone disc Belleville washer spring compresses the clutch plates evenly and that just makes for an overall easier pull at the clutch and more durability as well. As far as the frame and swing arm go, the swing arm is exactly the same as what you find on your KX450 while the frame is the same as well. It just has an updated top mount for the shock and it also has updated engine hangers to work with the KX250 engine. As far as the bodywork, the bodywork is exactly the same and for 2021 we have the all green plastics on the number plates as well. Continuing with the chassis, Kawasaki is back with their adjustable bar mounts again. Four different positions so you can put the bars in just like we had before but this bike also got the oversized Renthal fat bars that the KX450 got. So these bars are a little bit lower and they actually sweep back a little bit further so they're a little more racy than the KX250 had back in 2000. 2020. Back in 2020, they had the standard bars, skinnier, but they were actually more rigid because they had a crossbar. So that crossbar decreases the flex on the handlebars, made it a little bit more harsh at your hands. Additionally, the rear brake went from a 250 millimeter disc to a 240 millimeter disc at the rear brake. So we're happy about that. Uh, some of the Kawasaki models like the KX450 have a massive oversized rear brake and we don't need it. We like to use most of our braking at the front brake anyways. For us, the 250 millimeter rear brake disc was just too touchy and easy to slam on the brakes and skid coming into corners. We definitely appreciate the 240 millimeter rear brake disc. Finishing off the updates for 2021, the suspension was refined and has some updates as well. The KX250 has KYB suspension rather than the Showa suspension that you find on the KX450. We had 5.0 spring rates in the front last year, but this year they actually went down to find more comfort in the front with 4.9 spring rates. In the rear shock, the spring rate is exactly the same. However, the shock spring is a little bit lighter for 2021, so that's pretty cool as well. The KX250 comes with Dunlop's MX3S tires, front and rear, and it comes with a 100 rear tire as well. The MXA Wrecking Crew really likes the Dunlop MX3S tires. They're not the best for durability, so if you're looking for tires to run for a long time, these probably aren't your choice, but soft, connectability, just overall feel on the track. You can't complain about the MX3S, and that makes it really nice when you're jumping on your brand new bike. Like the Honda 450 did this year, 
and also the KX450 did when it got the hydraulic clutch. The KX250 did jump up in weight for the new model year. So with the electric starter, hydraulic clutch actuation, Kawasaki guys here told us that it jumped up about four and a half pounds. So this bike weighed in at 221 pounds last year on the scales. MXA Wrecking Crew is excited to dump the gas and weigh this bike dry weight to really dive into the details and see exactly how much it gained or lost. Lastly, the couplers on this bike comes with three different couplers. Uh, you can't change your maps on the fly like you can with some of the other brands. So that is a little bit of a bummer, especially for MXA, because we're always changing between different maps, trying to find out what's the best. For the KX250, it comes with a white coupler. That's the more aggressive coupler. It comes with green, that's the standard stock that's what comes on your bike. And then also comes with a black, more mellow coupler that's meant to fill in the bottom end power and make it a little bit easier to ride out of the corners. Overall, Daryl and I both were super impressed with the KX250. The hydraulic clutch didn't wear out at all today. We didn't find any slipping, and that was really nice. The smaller rear brake rotor was also easier. We weren't slamming on the brakes, and uh, that wasn't locking up coming into corners. The power was definitely strong, and Daryl and I were both really impressed with it. And this bike is loud, too. The loud factor definitely makes you feel like you're riding more of a race bike as well. Daryl and I were both excited about the power but we also wanted to mess with it as well so we, we definitely dove into mapping changes uh, we tried the aggressive map stock map and the mellow map and surprisingly we really liked the mellow map and the aggressive map the stock map was stock it was standard it was good but the mellow map which was really surprising it was easier to ride through the corners and it's easier for us to carry momentum and uh, get out of the corners with less clutch so that was something that was really cool about the KX250. There was big differences between the three different couplers and I really appreciated that. On some of the other brands, the differences are so minor that it's, it can be hard to tell uh, unless you're really a, an experienced test rider. But with the KX250, I mean, it's, it's a big difference between each one and that was pretty cool for us to feel. The black coupler picked up easier in the corners. It required less clutching coming out, but it definitely didn't have the strong top end power that the stock green coupler and the aggressive white coupler had. So we wanted to use the top end power that the white coupler had and combine it with the mellow coupler as well. So we worked with Chavez, Mike Chavez here from Kawasaki. This guy's a longtime Kawasaki mechanic and he knows how to make these bikes run well. So the MXA Wrecking Crew, we kind of came up with our own map using Kawasaki's mapping calibrator that they have. So this is a tool that you can buy straight from Kawasaki or at your Kawasaki dealer to adjust the power on your couplers. Mike Chavez used the ignition settings from the white aggressive coupler and he used the fuel settings from the black mellow coupler and combined them to give us a little more power off the bottom and keep that over rev that we liked on top. So that was really cool. And we'll have pictures of the ignition and fuel settings that we did on the Kawasaki calibration tool. We'll add those pictures into our MXA race test of this bike. Additionally, for changes that we made today, this bike comes with a 50 tooth rear sprocket and we liked it and it was good, but to get a little more pull coming out of these tighter Paris Raceway corners, we added an extra tooth on the rear. We went up to 51 teeth on the sprocket and that was a lot easier for us to come out of the corners and be able to pull second gear. So a lot of times me, pro level rider, I was dropping down to first gear in some of the corners and having to shift right on the exit. And I didn't mind it too much, but it is so much nicer when you can pull second. And a lot of times you have to have a stronger bike, like maybe with a Yamaha YZ250F, has more of a, a bottom end power or even a mod bike to really pull that second gear to the tighter corners we have here at Paris Raceway. So with that extra tooth on the rear sprocket, we were able to do that. Both Daryl and I liked that. That was something that we did at the end of the day and it made the bike so much better. As far as suspension goes, we had no complaints. Paris Raceway, they obviously, Kawasaki prepped the track up for us to be perfectly excited and happy with their new model. So to really dive into how this bike's gonna work on rougher tracks, we're gonna take it out to Glen Helen, which we call kind of our dirt dyno. We take all of our bikes out there, compare them back to back, and really get a feel for the power, suspension, handling. As far as suspension, handling, chassis go today here at Parish Raceway, no major complaints. Both Daryl and I felt balanced, and the only little thing that Daryl could pick apart, and I later realized once the track got a little more dry, is that when we were going through the faster sweepers, we felt like the front end was a little skating we felt like we might want to add a little more weight on the front end. So the KYB guys told us that we should try raising the sag. We had the sag at 105 today, maybe going up to 102, 103. Might put a little more weight on the front end and give us a little more stability there. 
But as far as the rest of the bike handled, the suspension was soft for a pro-level rider and even for Daryl, a little bit heavier rider, but it handled well for us today, being that the track was smooth, had some really good ruts. Overall, just a really comfortable, fun to ride track. The 2021 Kawasaki KX250 was super impressive, and Daryl and I were both excited about the power that this thing gave us, and we're really looking forward to putting it up, up against our Husqvarna FC250, our KTM 250 SXF, our Yamaha YZ250F, our Honda CRF 250, and more to really dive into the details and see how this bike compares to the rest of them. So we're getting closer to MXA's 2021 250 shootout, and we're excited to see how the updates on this KX250 are gonna to compare to the rest of the models. So as always, this is just our first ride video, and these are just our initial impressions after day one of riding the new 2021 KX250. And like I said, we're at a different track. We don't usually test at Paris Raceway, so some of our calculations might be a little different once we get them out to Glen Helen, to the rough, gnarly and tough track that, that is. So make sure to stay tuned to Motocross Action Magazine for the full in-depth race test where we dive into the details, talk about what's changed, why it's changed and how it works on the track. And we'll have more articles on the KX250 on motocrossactionmag.com where we break apart different product tests. I did a lot of product testing on this bike last year. We also got the latest news, reviews, race results, product tests and more. And also to stay up to date with the latest Motocross Action videos, click the subscribe button on YouTube just to see when we upload more videos. And wait, before you go, we got more new motocross action videos, so make sure to click these thumbnails to stay up to date with the MXA Wrecking Crew.